the best game we played at PAX was another Friedman Freeze game, who's actually one of our... Yeah, uh, Friedman Freeze, if you don't know, is the power grid guy. Yep. And all his games come in a green box, and all his games are have a name that is two words that begin with F. Which uh, Power Grid was translated from the German, German guys. The German name of Power Grid is two words that begin with F. Don't get on me about this, non-German speakers. Yep, Elkfest, Elkfest. Right, we played a Friedman Freeze game that is not new, but we hadn't played it before. We played it maybe three or four times at PAX. Yep. And that game is Fresh Fish. Fresh Fish. Fresh Fish. Fresh Fish. Fresh Fish. Fresh Fish. Our, our, uh, our joke at PAX was saying it increasingly like that just as the weekend went on. Right, so the way Fresh Fish works, it's a pretty simple game. Uh, on the board, there are these four... Well, it's simple, but... Yes, there are four food trucks. And you are have four carts. One cart per truck. And you want to get your fish cart as close to the fish truck as you can. And you want to get your soda truck, your soda cart as close to the soda truck as you can. That way, you know, the food delivery comes in the truck. You sell the food out of your cart and the food that you sell will be fresher than the food other people sell because the delivery took less time to get to your store the theme than other people's stores. Barely even... Cons- comes close to making sense. No, it makes no sense whatsoever. But especially the, when you see the game, who would make? I, re- like I really that? like the art. The art is good. Yeah, it is. It's that kind of. It's like a. It's almost like a garbage pail kid style, but cuter and kitschy. Yeah, and like the fish. I don't know what the name for it is, but I've seen it around and I really like it. I particularly like the fish. Actually, the fish is okay. But the I your like- score at the end is how the combined total of how many spaces away from each cart or from each truck your respective cart is. Now, due to the rules of the game, you have to be at least one space away. So, like, you could get a four because each you masterfully got every cart one space away from every truck. Yeah, so that already is a pretty solid mechanic for, like, a simple but complex game. Mm-hmm. Uh, to add to that, the way you play is you put reservation tokens out. On your turn, you either draw a tile from the bag, which we'll talk about, or you put a reservation token out. The reality is you put reservation tokens out for a long time. You've got six of them, and you just keep putting them out. You could go really risky and go to the bag early. If someone but goes if you the- go to the bag when you don't have a lot of tokens out, you're pretty much just hurting yourself. So it really, the, the rules sometimes. of the game... Sometimes. But usually, if you don't have a lot of tokens on the board, you're almost definitely going to hurt yourself. So there's not a lot of incentive to just go straight for the bag and hoping you'll fuck someone else instead of, and luckily not fuck yourself. Like, you'll know, when, when, with people who've played this game before, if someone goes to the bag early... A hush falls over the crowd. It's like, oh, Scott's he's going. going you're to the going bag. in that bag with like two tokens. Out? Where are you going to put that cart? Where are you going right. to put that cart? It's like you don't have any reservation token anywhere near the fish. What if you pull the fish out of that bag? You are just fucked. Yep. So here's the other main mechanic. You have 14 chips or 15 chips, some number of chips. The they're, chips mo- they're money. Oh yeah, and you want a low score, obviously. Obvi- low, it's golf. Low yes. score. The chips are negative points, and you bid them. When a cart of a particular type comes up... Right, so someone reaches in the bag and pulls out the fish card, which means it's time for somebody to put out a fish cart. Closed fist auction, whoever bid the most puts their cart out. Right, and so you, everyone's got reservation tokens near the fish. Everyone does a closed fist auction, see who bids the most, and then that person gets to put their, replace one of their reservation tokens with the fish cart that is theirs. Now, because we're all pro, I mean, Chris and Anthony, who are pretty pro... They own the, the ones, game. Yeah, they're, they... Literally. They were playing nothing, but they played mostly Friedman Freeze games because they also had Famiglia with them. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so, in pro mode, what you'll see if someone fucks up is everybody bids zero because the person who drew the tile wins because they break a tie that way. And that's why it's very dangerous to and they pull are forced the t- Oh. Pull the tile out. Oh, Scott, if you what's have... that? Your fish card? You only have one token up? Oh, I guess you're getting max score on the fish card. Right. It's like, so Rim goes in the bag thinking, hey, 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 I'll pull out a card and screw these guys. I don't have a lot of tokens out, but I'll screw them over. You pull out the fish cart. Everyone sees that your token is like on the other side of the board, far away from the fish. Everyone bids zero. Rim now must put his fish cart on that far away token, and it's worth a million points. Yeah, and he Scott sucks. might be like seven, eight, nine away from one, but you max out at like 14 if you can't get there. Mm-hmm. And basically, the way it works mechanically, other than that auction thing, is what you, you place these little uh, reservation things. And when something comes out, there's areas of the board, numbers of squares that are sort of surrounded, and they have one or two next to them. That means there can only be one or two things in that space. So if Scott puts a blocking tile 
on one of the spaces in a two area because he had a reservation thing there. And I put my cart on another one in that area. Everything else in that entire area becomes roads, and anyone else who had a reservation token there just gets kicked the fuck out. So me and Rim, we both put our reservation tokens in this area really close to the cheese. I win the cheese auction and put my cheese down. It's a one area, which I get means kicked out. Rim loses his reservation token. If another cheese auction happens, uh, that bad could be news bad bears. news bears for Rim, who doesn't have any reservation tokens near the cheese now. And... If I lost the auction, uh-oh, bad for me. Yeah. So to make matters even worse... The carts you put out or the blocking tiles you put out block. You have to follow a road. So we kind of played bastard mode where we had carts that were kind of like trucks that were near each other. Uh, many games in a row, a cart got entirely walled off from the entire board. And you know what the answer is in this game? Max score. Yep. Fuck you. Yep. The, the, the answer to any question, what if I do this, is you're fucked. Yeah, game, you can, it's like, what if I can't? I can connect, but I have to go off the edge of the board? It's like, oh, you can actually do that. Yeah. It's two spaces for every edge of board space you use, so that costs you like, oh, it's max score. You're too far away. This game looks really simple, like a light, fun game. It is one of the most brutal, like, short multiplayer it is games I've ever played. The cutthroatest. Of it is, placing carts and picnic uh, flea market stands. This is a this is a game where four, four or five people will do a closed fix, fist auction. Everyone opens. And they, everyone immediately closes all their fingers but one. Yeah. <laughs> after seeing what the other people had in their hand. The game has two phases, effectively. The posturing phase and the fucking phase. <laughs> and there's really nothing else to this game. <laughs> Fresh fish fuck. <laughs> uh, so the thing about this game that I noticed, though, is that uh, I won every time I played. I think I won a few times, but I, I lost I won a few at least, times too. I think I played twice and won twice. Oh, you didn't I, win every time you played. I, I won. I won. You did win more often than me. Anyway, but uh, what I was doing to, that made a difference was um, when I was putting my reservation tokens. I was trying to put them in such a way to where no auction result could fuck me, and. As long as I eventually got the auction, which is going to happen eventually, at the end of the game, every cart will have been placed no matter what, uh, I would have my cart in a good position. So that way, I didn't have to bid a lot in the auctions. Like, a, a cheese auction would come up, and I'd be like, you know what? If I won this cheese auction, It'd be that, good. that would be a good thing. However, if I lose the cheese auction, it's not really going to hurt me at all because I placed my marker in such a clever place that it's going to get a good score. However, I can't really be bumped out easily. I saw you with that strategy. And I, it worked very well very many times. Anthony mm -hmm. found a pretty good counter to that strategy by bagging earlier and putting markets out, blockers, and just knocking my backup guy also off the board before the end of the game. Mm-hmm. And then I have got max score on two carts and lost by a lot instead of winning by a lot. Yeah, so I was able to, with my strategy, not have to bid a lot in the auctions. And usually there would be one auction during the game where I couldn't avoid bidding a lot. And I would bid a lot and I'd win that important auction. And then all of my carts would be like one, two, three, not a lot of points at all. And I just had a ridiculously good score. Yeah. Uh, the first time I played, which I did win, my strategy was, well, I've got these tokens. Uh, if not now, then when? Uh, my goal is to spend all of them. Uh, and it actually worked really well. It's Yeah, I mean, if you spend all your tokens and you don't care about bidding a lot, you're going to have great placements. And you usually... Getting great placements, your score is going to be like less than five, six, something like that. But I have seen negative scores. So sure, but you know that, that's a that's a terrific score though in a four player game, right? Where someone's <laughs> getting like a fifteen on something. In a five player game, <laughs> I saw one where someone won with like thirteen. Like it's right, yeah, it's like you're gonna have one bad cart is gonna ruin everything. So, you know, if you spend all your tokens and get four, get all your carts in good positions, that's a good score. If you get one bad position but you didn't spend anything in the auctions, that's also going to be a good score. Right, so there's a lot of different ways you can approach it uh, and still turn out well. But the I, the real the game is real quick to teach, real quick to play, really really satisfying. There's some randomness elements to it, like it's not a perfect. Well, turn order game. matters a lot for yep. getting the good positions. But it is really fun. Like the I think turn order actually helped me quite a bit because every time, like I had at the beginning of the game, every time like a position in mind, like for my marker. And every time it got to my turn, 90% of the time, that position was still open because of turn order. Yep. But the game has a very high fun economy, as in 
the amount of fun per minute it takes to play is a very high value. Mm -hmm, that is true. And there's also, so it's a Friedman Freeze game, so it actually has two versions of the rules. We were playing the like newer, updated version, but there is an older version. The more streamlined version. Yeah, the difference between the two is basically in the version that we were playing, the one that most people would play, when you fill a place, then the roads go in. But in the original weird rules, it's kind of like battle line. You only fill in roads by deduction. Mm -hmm. By like all places have to be connected to all places. So once you show that they're like, you have to place a road here or that breaks, then roads start appearing and stuff starts happening. Yep. We did not actually play that way because the pro the former way is great. Mm -hmm. So uh, also the former way is kind of more dickish because in the in the easy, in the older way, in the very least, everything's connected. But the way we were playing with the newer rules, you could very easily entirely wall something off and make the game horrible. Very intentionally, people would get picked uh, flea market stands and line them up in a diagonal, impossible to cross by any means, so that it's like, well, the people on this side of these flea market stands can have good scores on cheese. Everyone who's who isn't already on this side, your cheese score is at minimum going to be like eight. And you're that's if you get that one spot there. Everyone else, 15, get fucked. And you're going to look those other people in the eye as you place that cart, flipping them off and high-fiving the person who's on the good side with you. I frequently, another part of my strategy was to specifically put markers in places I wanted uh, flea market stands yep. and then go in the bag and actively try to get flea market stands to fuck people up. And it worked. It's a super fun game. If you, I would highly, it, it, like, it's also really tiny. If you're a board gamer at all, just own it. It's a perfect game to have in your repertoire to like keep it in the and bag. And it's not like it's it doesn't it's not like any other game. The closest game I can think to this would be uh, uh through the desert. No, yeah. But yeah. it's it's not But through the desert actually takes a long time right, to play. Right, it's not really even it's it's similar to through the desert, but it's not it's not close enough to where they're like displacing each other, right? Yep. It's like there's no other game that you have that is like this game where you wouldn't want this on your shelf. But Through the Desert takes so it takes twice as long to play as this game and, and it's, it's not, not as, as good. satisfying. Yeah. Yeah, so. So like this is the kind of game that I would just carry in my backpack at a convention, right alongside like Elkfest and those other little games that I carry around in Wizard. Mhm. Mm there you go. That's it. Fresh fish. Fresh fish. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brand OK for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs>